So my name is uh, Nathan Burkett Cadena. I'm a professor at the Florida Medical Entomology Laboratory. Can you guys all say that for me? Is everybody saying Florida Medical Entomology Laboratory? All right. So program today is going to be about blood suckers. Okay, who can tell me what kind of blood sucker is this? You in the red shirt. I have no idea what you said because you are muted. Vampire bat. That is a vampire bat. You're probably just gonna have to leave this unmuted because there's gonna be a lot of questions from my side. All right, that's perfect. That is a vampire bat. It is a major blood sucker. How about this? Who can tell me what kind of blood sucker this is? You right there in front in the mini colored shirt. Louder. Louder, louder. louder. A leech. a leech that is right a leech is a blood sucker that is a blood sucking leech that's exactly what that is fantastic how about this i bet nobody can tell me what this is how about you there in the back waving your hand in the gray shirt yes what's that that's exactly right that is a mosquito probably the most famous of all bloodsuckers. And I hate to play favorites, but it is probably my favorite bloodsucker. How about this one? We're getting a little bit more challenging. Who can tell me what this is? All right, right there on the left in the dark shirt. Or maybe that's the right. Say that one more time. A flea. That's a flea, that's right. How do you know it's a flea? because it looks like one exactly right fantastic a flea is a special blood sucker this is a tough one who can tell me what this one is all right the only person with their hand raised go for it if you know it shout it out no that's a good guess so i'm going to give you a hint i pulled this this arthropod out of my son's hair. That's right, lice. This is a louse. One is a louse, two or more are lice, just like one mouse and multiple mice. Fantastic, very good. Now this is getting tougher and tougher. How about this one? Anybody know what this one is? All right, go for it. Who do you want to call on? Uh, red shirt. Um, is that That's a good guess. No, a tick has eight legs. This one has six legs. This one might bite you while you're sleeping. A bed bug. That's right. This is our friend, the bed bug. Beautiful red bed bug. Now, if anybody knows this blood sucker, I'll be very impressed. Anybody want to take a guess? This one, this is a kind of bug that will bite you on your lips as though it were giving you a kiss. A kissing bug. A kissing bug. That's right. A kissing bug. Another name for this one is the blood sucking cone nose. Now, you've probably been bitten by this one in Florida. Anybody? Gray shirt? Is it a fly? It is a fly. It might bite you if you were riding um, an animal with hoofs that goes a horse fly. A horse fly, that's right. This is a horse fly. Horse flies are biting blood sucking flies. Now, this is a tough one. I can guarantee you, you've been bitten by this one, but you may not have seen it bite you because it's so tiny. So this picture shows how big this insect is next to a mosquito and a penny. Who can tell me what this tiny blood sucking insect is? Not a tick. It might bite you when you're at the beach. Uh, did somebody say sand fly? 
Oh, well, this is either a sand fly or a no see -um. That's what people call this one. It's so tiny that you can no see it. All right. So there are lots of kinds of blood suckers out there, right? Uh, one of them we didn't talk about is here on the lower right. What's this one? That's a tick. Very good. Very good. All right. So we know that blood suckers suck our blood, but who can tell me why a mosquito sucks our blood? Why does a mosquito bite us? Who's over, somebody over in a dark shirt to the right there with their arms outstretched to the middle? Can males do it for their eggs? That is perfect. Females do it for their eggs. You've stolen all my thunder, but I'm so glad you did because that means you know it. So what are these things? Anybody take a guess? Yes. Those are eggs. This is eggs of an 80s mosquito. These are mosquito eggs. They almost look like little seeds, don't they? How about these? What do you think these are? That's right. I couldn't fool you guys. Mosquito eggs as well. This is a called an egg raft. So this is about 75 eggs that are laid together in a cluster by a single female mosquito. And you might not be able to tell, but this little cluster of eggs is floating on the water. Here's a couple of other mosquito eggs that you might think look like uh, footballs or uh, rugby balls if you're British or Australian or South African. But these are some mosquito eggs. These belong to the mosquito Toxorhynchides rutilus septin trianalis. Can everybody say Toxorhynchides rutilus septin trianalis? That was perfect. Very good. All right. So here's some more mosquito eggs. These are from mosquitoes of the genus Anopheles. And what comes out of mosquito eggs? Who can tell me that? What comes out of a mosquito egg? What hatches from a mosquito egg? Is it a baby little mosquito with wings? Mosquito larvae. That's exactly right. And if you look right here, can you see the arrows pointing to these two tiny little baby mosquito larvae that just came out of eggs? Aren't they so cute? They're so cute when they're larvae. You see the one on the left there is still coming out of its egg. Look at that. Can you see his tiny little eyes, tiny little beady eyes? Give me a thumbs up if you can see it. Excellent. All right. So let's talk about mosquito larvae. Here's a photograph of some mosquito larvae. This is four of the different kinds of mosquito larvae that you can find in Florida. We have Orthopodomia, Culex, Mansonia, and Seraphora, some of my favorites. Here's some more mosquito larvae. Here's Adiomaya, Anopheles, Uranotenia, Toxorhynchides, Culicida, and Culicida. Did you ever imagine there was so much uh, variation in form and coloration in mosquito larvae? These are all mosquitoes that live right here in Florida. So let's talk about mosquito larvae for a second. Where do you find a mosquito larva? If you want to go find one, where do you need, what do you need to look in? Hmm? I didn't get that. Where do you need to look? Do you look under rocks? You look on mountaintops? A body of water. That's right. You need water. So like out in the middle of the ocean, right? It... No, exactly. So what are you, you looking for? Like um, lakes and rivers and streams and marshes and swamps and ditches? That's right. So that's where you find mosquito larvae. So this is a mosquito larva. And it has three body regions, just like an insect does a head, a thorax, and an abdomen. And what is this arrow pointing to on this mosquito larva? 
Okay, right there in the middle with the gray shirt on, I think. His eye? That's right. That is the eye of that mosquito larva. Doesn't it have such beautiful eyes? Oh my goodness. Are you in love? I know I am. What about this thing? What is this that the uh, arrow is pointing to there? What is that? Anybody tell me? Are you, can you tell me what the mosquito uses this for? Probably swimming. That's a good guess. It, for swimming would be a very good guess, but uh, it lives in water, but it is doesn't. It, a tail? it is kind of like a tail, but it uses it for something very specific because a mosquito larva lives in the water, but it doesn't breathe the water like a fish does. It breathes the air. It's kind of like a snorkel. Well, so does this mosquito larva breathe through its head or through its butt? That's right. So they don't breathe through their nose and mouth like we do. They breathe through a tube on their butt. That's called a siphon. Can you guys say siphon? Fantastic. Who can tell me what's going on here? Any guesses? This is the next part of the... In it's hatching. Well, this is a pupa. That's that's very good. So that is a pupa, which is coming out of the old old larva's skin or exoskeleton. So when it's transforming from the larva to the pupa, the shiny new pupa's got to shed the old skin in order to transform. So let's talk about the pupa for a second. So like other insects, it has, or stages in the life cycle, it has a head, a thorax, and the abdomen. And the abdomen is kind of like a tail that it uses for swimming. But look closely. Can you see some parts of the adult mosquito inside this pupa? If you do look closely, you can see the eye of the adult mosquito, the compound eye. And then wrapped up inside there are the legs of the adult mosquito. So even before the adult hatches out, you can see features of the adult mosquito inside the body of the pupa. And the pupa also has breathing tubes, which it uses to breathe the air. So what does a pupa eat? What does a pupal mosquito eat? All right, anybody? What a, what a pupal... What's that? Uh, no, it's a trick question. So all insect pupae eat nothing. They're just a stage of transformation. So they don't have a mouth which with, with which they can consume anything at all. What's happening here? Say that again. That's right. It is turning into an adult mosquito. That's excellent. So what we have is an emerging adult mosquito coming out of the old skin of the mosquito pupa. So it is going from being an aquatic organism to an organism that lives on land and in the air in that transformation. <clears throat> so here we have the life cycle of a mosquito. We got uh, an adult female that lives above the water, lays eggs, and from the egg comes a tiny little mosquito larva that grows. And how many times does a mosquito larva shed its skin before it comes a, becomes a pupa? That's right. Very good. Four times. So there are four stages. All right. So we're going to talk a little bit more closely about mosquitoes, which are really the ultimate bloodsuckers. All right. <clears throat> this mosquito is one of my favorite mosquitoes, and you're going to hear me say that a lot because I have a lot of favorite mosquitoes. This is Toxorhynchites rutilis, also known as the cannibal mosquito. This is a true mosquito that we find here in Florida, but it does not feed on blood. So it does not bite. It is not a bloodsucker. It is a mosquito, but it's not a bloodsucker. So we know that mosquitoes feed on blood 
to produce eggs for their babies. So <clears throat> where does this mosquito get the um, energy it needs to produce its babies, do you think? Where does it get its energy? It needs the same amount of energy as blood-sucking mosquitoes, but it doesn't get it from blood. Where does it get it from? It gets it from other animals, that's right, but it gets it in the larval stage. So these photos show Toxorhynchites rutilus septentrionalis. Can you see how large the larva of this mosquito is compared to the one beside it? And then in the photo on the right, you can see this head of Toxorhynchites rutilus septentrionalis as it is eating another mosquito larva. That's why they call it the cannibal mosquito because it eats the larva of other mosquitoes. It sucks them down like spaghetti. Do I have a question? Does it eat the, eat the larva of mosquitoes? You said, does it eat the larva what? By the mosquitoes inside of it or when it goes out of their larva? Um, when it's a larva, in the water, it eats the larvae of other mosquitoes, including its own kind. So it lives in um, like uh, holes in trees that fill up with water. And uh, if another mosquito lays its eggs in that and the eggs hatch, it will eat all those mosquito larvae. The cannibal mosquito, one of my favorite mosquitoes. Here's another one of my favorite mosquitoes. It's called Wyomaya vanduzii. Can everybody say Wyomaya? You can remember Wyomaya is in Why Oh Maya Did You Bite Me? Little song there. You're, you're welcome to take that and use it at some point. Uh, so Wyomaya are interesting uh, because they only live, their larvae only live in um, living plants. What kind of plant is it that we have a photo of here on this page? Can anybody tell me what kind of plant that is? Pineapple. Well, pineapple is one of these kind of plants, right? So yeah, you're right. This, this one's not pineapple, but it is related to pineapple. And does anybody know air plants or bromeliads? Have you covered those in any of your uh, other Audubon Advocates um, lectures? Okay, well, these kinds of plants <clears throat> will collect a little bit of rainwater between their leaves, and this kind of mosquito lays its eggs in that little bit of water, and its larvae develop only in the spaces between uh, leaves of living plants. Another one of my favorite mosquitoes is Cochlatidia perturbans. Why didn't everybody scream out Cochlatidia perturbans? <clears throat> That's excellent. So Cochlatidae perturbans is not special in the adult stage, but its larva has its siphon, its breathing siphon, adapted like a little spine, and it uses it to pierce the roots of plants like cattails. Raise your hand if you see cattails around in marshes and swamps and stuff. So this is sometimes called the cattail mosquito because it will um, be associated with cattail marshes. One of my favorite mosquitoes. Another one of my favorite mosquitoes is Dinoceritis cancer. So who can tell me what cancer has to do with this mosquito? Wait, crab? Well, that's a good guess. That's a good guess. What kind of crab is this? Does anybody recognize this kind of crab? Okay, well, that's a good guess because it's got one big claw. This is called the giant land crab. And that thing to the left of it is its burrow. So it makes these burrows in the ground and the burrows go all the way down to the water. So what do you think you might find in that water at the bottom of a land crab burrow? Eggs. That's right, the eggs and the larvae of this mosquito. So Dinoceritis cancer lays its eggs and its larvae develop inside the burrows of the giant land crab here in Florida, Cardosoma. 
and there is a Dinosaurides cancer female with her bronzy scales all over her body. Almost looks like she's made out of copper. Beautiful beast. Dinosaurites cancer. So does anyone have cancer? Is there sign of the zodiac? Libra. Libra, okay. So Libra, Taurus, Gemini, Cancer, these are all signs of the zodiac. And it's a, it's a symbol of what time of the year you were born. Um, and so Cancer is the crab. So it's a constellation that looks like a crab. All right. So what I'm hoping to show you here with these um, examples of these different mosquitoes is that there's a lot more mosquitoes in the world, different kinds of mosquitoes than just the ones that bite you in your yard. And there's some beautiful animals out there. Lots of them have stripes or colorful legs or um, patches of scales, which make them as um, ornate and beautiful as any, any bird that you'll find. Oops. So there's about 3,500 species of mosquito in the whole world. And in Florida, we have almost 90 species of mosquito. We have more species of mosquito than any other state in the nation. Go Florida, woohoo! All right. If I got a question out there? Which mosquito bites us the most? Well, it depends on whether you're in your neighborhood or whether you're out like in the mangroves or down at the lagoon. If you're in your neighborhood, the mosquito that bites you the most is probably Aedes aegypti, the yellow fever mosquito. But if you're down by the lagoon or in the mangroves, then it is Aedes tanyorhynchus, also known as the black salt marsh mosquito. It's a good question. So there's a lot of mosquito species around the world, but people really don't like mosquitoes. Who loves mosquitoes? Raise your hand if you love mosquitoes. See, nobody ever raises their hand. I love mosquitoes. I let mosquitoes bite me all the time. I study mosquitoes for a living. I go out and collect mosquitoes in my spare time. I'm always told I have a very weird hobby, but that's just the truth. And so most people think that mosquitoes spread disease, Mosquitoes should be eradicated. Mosquitoes are generally bad. Who could tell me what eradicated means? Somebody can tell me, right? Killed off. That's right, perfect, killed off. That means everyone, kill them all. Get them all, all gone. That would break my heart. I couldn't handle it if people eradicated mosquitoes. I don't know what I would do with my spare time. I'd probably just have to spend more time with my wife and son and they wouldn't want that. Okay, so there's about 3,500 species of mosquito out there, but only around 200 kinds of mosquito species of mosquito are really important for spreading human disease. But most of the mosquito species, about 3,300 species don't spread any diseases to humans. So this, to me, raises a couple of questions that we can talk about. Why do some mosquitoes carry disease while others don't? And how do we know which mosquito species carry disease? Hmm, let's talk about this for a minute. So what's this mosquito doing? Who can tell me what this mosquito is doing? Go for it with a yellow sleeve right in front. <clears throat> That's right. Whose thumb do you think that mosquito is biting? That's right, it's my thumb. So that mosquito is biting my thumb. I took that picture. Please don't judge me for my long thumbnail, but that mosquito is biting me. Most people are not very surprised to learn that mosquitoes bite people. But what we should say is that some species of mosquito bite people, some of them do. And other species of mosquito like to bite wild animals. Can you see these mosquitoes in the photo biting the nose of this rabbit? Does, can you see the tiny little white socks on the end of the mosquito's feet as they're flying in the air? <coughs> can you guys see those little white socks? Well, that tells me that those mosquitoes are probably 
this mosquito called Sorophora ferox, one of my favorite mosquito species because it has purple legs. And what color are its eyes? Yeah, like red and green. Isn't that amazing? Did you know that some mosquitoes can have red and green eyes? Well, this one does. And its scientific name means the ferocious itch bearer. So that means that if you go into the woodlands where this mosquito is, it is ferocious. Who can tell me what ferocious means? Go for it. <laughs> that's good. I like that. Terrible, angry. Yeah, <clears throat> that's probably how some of you describe your brothers and sisters, right? Ferocious. So this is the ferocious itch bearer. And this photo, you can see the white socks or white tips of the legs of Sorophora ferox and the purple legs. So uh, to confirm that this is the mosquito biting that rabbit. Thank you. All right, so not only do mosquitoes bite wild animals, but they bite our domesticated friend animals, like cats and like dogs. Has anybody ever seen their dog being attacked by mosquitoes like this, like at the beach or the lagoon? Does anybody know a disease? that mosquitoes can give to dogs, that can carry for dogs, that can um, affect their dog's heart. It is a kind of worm that affects their heart. Heartworm, that's right. So when you have to go to the veterinarian and get heartworm pills to protect your dog from heartworm, you're trying to protect them against a mosquito transmitted disease. It could be species like this one, Aedes tormentor, which mean, whose name means the tormenting gnat. Gnat is another name for a little fly. Here's another picture of Aedes tormentor, one of my favorite mosquitoes, showing this silvery stripe down its back. Aedes tormentor, it could be a mosquito like Aedes solicitans, which is also known as the golden salt marsh mosquito. Here's another picture of A.D. solicitans. You might ask, why is this guy so, showing us so many pictures of mosquitoes? It's because I'm the one talking and I can show you whatever I want to. <clears throat> what is this mosquito biting? Who can tell me what this mosquito is biting? You can only see a little bit of the animal, but maybe you can figure out what it is. That's excellent. It is a chicken. What part of the chicken is it? His head, that's right, his head. More specifically, it is the comb. So this is a poult or a young chicken. There is that mosquito called Culex quinquefasciatus, which is blood sucking on this chicken. Quinquefasciatus means five stripes. What about this mosquito? What's this mosquito biting? Who can tell me that? A snake. A snake, that is right. You, from the eye of this snake, you can tell what kind it is because it has a cat-like slit for a pupil, straight up and down slit for its eye pupil. So what kind of snake is this? What's, what's that? A viper. A viper, thank you, yes. This is a viper. So here we have a blood-sucking mosquito who is very brave. She has flown right up to the mouth of a venomous viper to bite it right on the lip. And I can tell you from this photograph <clears throat> that because of the way the mosquito's beak or proboscis has been downward, that this mosquito is sucking the blood from this viper. Who can tell me what kind of animal this eye belongs to? Crocodile. Uh, that's almost right. It is a relative of a crocodile, an alligator. Thank you. Now, I want you to take a look for a second and see if you can spot any blood suckers around the eye of this alligator. How many can you see? They're under his eye. That's right. So there are at least seven mosquitoes in this single photo 
um, around the eye of this alligator sucking its blood. So in this little circle panel here, I've just zoomed in on one of these mosquitoes so you could get a little bit better look of it. So even if you are an alligator with hard scales over the entire outside of your body, you still get your blood sucked by blood suckers. Isn't that disappointing? How about this one? How many blood suckers can you see on this baby alligator? One, two, three, four. So even poor little baby alligators that live out in the mangroves can't get away from the blood suckers. Hmm. What kind of animal is this one? A lizard. A lizard. That's exactly right. So this is specifically called the green anole lizard. And if you look close on its hind legs and its tail, there's four mosquitoes biting this lizard all at the same time. Scales don't protect them. So how do you think that mosquitoes bite an animal with scales? How do they do it? How do they get past the scales? You think they pierce right through the hard scales? That's right, they go between the scales. Between the scales is flexible skin. So they just go right for that soft, flexible skin between the scales. What kind of animal is this? Frog. That's a frog. This is a tree frog. And this blood sucker is blood sucking the blood of a tree frog, a squirrel tree frog, in fact. <clears throat> How about this animal? What is this? What's that? A toad. How many mosquitoes, how many bloodsuckers can you see on this toad all at the same time? Count closely. Can anybody see 10? There's at least 10. If you start down here on this leaf by the hind leg, here's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and I must have made up the last one. <clears throat> so there's at least nine, all at the same time. That is the mosquito Uranotenia loei. Can you guys say that together? Uranotenia loei. One of my favorite of mosquitoes. <clears throat> so if you look closely, if this mosquito, it has these patches of silvery blue scales on its thorax and abdomen, making it one of the most beautiful mosquitoes in the world, in my opinion. Here is another species of Uranotenia, which is biting a poison dart frog. Why is that dangerous? Anybody? because the frog has poison in its skin. So um, native peoples who live in South America will take uh, these frogs and, and um, put a dart on their skin and they'll collect the poison and then use it to shoot down monkeys and birds from trees. And this mosquito is so bold, he just says, she says, I don't care. <clears throat> I'm just gonna go bite this poison dart frog anyway. Special adaptations. Is there a question there? Do we have a question? Does the mosquito die from the poison? That is an excellent question. And the answer is no. The mosquito has somehow able to avoid ingesting the poisons from the skin of this poison dart frog and uh, survives the encounter. The more dangerous thing for this mosquito would to be to get in front of that frog and get eaten. Crazy, right? How about this animal? What kind of animal is being bitten by this mosquito? We've already seen, oh, it's a good guess. <clears throat> I'll give you a hint. This animal that's being bitten is itself a blood sucker. That's right, it's a leech. So here we have a blood-sucking mosquito sucking the blood of a blood-sucking leech. It's getting too crazy. This mosquito is called 
Uranotenia sapphirina, sapphirina like sapphire because of these bright blue scales uh, and stripes on its body. This mosquito is the only mosquito in the entire world which is known to feed on the blood of leeches and worms. Where do you think you would find this mosquito? That's, that's right. So this mosquito you find right in Florida, right in the United States. I was trying to trick you and make you say like, oh, in Brazil or in Panama or in the Congo. But this mosquito is found right here in Vero Beach. One of the most beautiful and interesting mosquitoes in the world, Uranotenia sapphirina. So let's get back to the questions we were asking earlier. What is the most dangerous mosquito? The most dangerous mosquito is almost certainly one called Aedes aegypti. It's the yellow fever mosquito. It also transmits uh, chikungunya and Zika and dengue fever, so all of these dangerous diseases. Maybe the other most dangerous mosquito is Anopheles gambii, which carries human malaria, <clears throat> a deadly pathogen. And so getting back to our questions, why do some mosquitoes carry disease while others don't? Well, uh, it's because a lot of the mosquitoes that are out there don't even bite people. So a lot of the mosquitoes that are out there bite reptiles, or they bite amphibians, or they bite leeches, or birds, or wild mammals, and they don't ever even bite a human being. And how do we know which mosquito species carry which diseases? <clears throat> well, uh, it's by studying them as medical entomologists. Okay, so let's get back to mosquitoes and why they bite. We said mosquitoes bite to produce eggs. So is this a male or a female mosquito that's biting me? Yeah. That's right. This is a female mosquito. So what is this mosquito doing then? Who can tell me that? Feeding it to the egg. No. Mm -mm. What is this? That's right. What kind of food is this mosquito drinking? Uh, it's close. What is, what's the other thing that a flower produces? <clears throat> Nectar. Nectar. Excellent. So a mosquito, a female mosquito, will drink blood to produce eggs, but she still needs energy for flying around, and she gets that energy from nectar from plants. Now we've seen that there are lots of kinds of blood suckers out there, but do they all feed on nectar, do you think? Well, some do and some don't. We'll see how much you guys know or how good you, of guessers you are. How about a flea? Do you think a flea feeds on nectar? Who says yes? Raise your, raise your hand if you think a flea feeds on nectar. Oh, you guys are good. That's right. Fleas do not feed on nectar. So does that mean that male fleas also feed on blood? What do you think? Do male fleas also suck blood? Yes. Yes, that's right. So for fleas, they're blood suckers and the males feed on blood, the females feed on blood, and even the flea larvae feed on blood. Because if the males and females are drinking blood, what is their poop made of? Blood, that's right. So their poop, fa their poop falls down off of the dogs and cats into the carpet, which is where the larva of the flea is, and they eat blood feces or blood poop that's what they eat so not only do they have to be kind of blood suckers but they have to eat the poop of their parents isn't that terrible how about how about lice do you think that lice feed on nectar raise your hand if you think that lice feed on nectar oh we got one wrong so do lice have wings you see any wings on the lice? They're just like fleas. 
That's right. They're just like fleas. So that means the males, the females, and the babies feed on blood. They are total blood suckers. That's the only thing they ever get to eat. How about you? If you had to eat just one thing for every meal, what would it be? What would be your thing for the rest of your life? Ice cream. What was that? <laughs> That's a good answer. Mine would be pizza. I'd be pizza every day for the rest of my life. All right. What about uh, bed bugs? Do you think bed bugs feed on nectar? They do not. They don't have wings either. So if you really want to feed on nectar, if you're an insect that feeds on nectar, you need wings to be able to get to those flowers. So a good rule of thumb is if you don't have wings, you're not going to feed on nectar. What about this guy? Do you think he feeds on nectar? This kissing bug? <laughs> it's a trick question. So this guy, he also feeds only on blood. The males, the females, and the nymphs. So the young ones only feed on blood. I know it's tough to figure out. Horse flies, um, they will feed on nectar. And noceums also feed on nectar, and they are important pollinators of a plant that I think most of you probably like a lot, even though you don't know it. Who can tell me what kind of plant this is? If you can tell me this one, I'll be really impressed. What was that? That's right. Fantastic. Yes, that's very impressive. Very good. So this is cacao, cacao tree. This is where chocolate comes from. So most people in the United States never get to see it like this. They see it like this. But so no seums in the tropics. So in Mexico and in Guatemala, Colombia, the no seums are the only pollinators of cacao trees. And so without noceums, we would not have chocolate. Oh no. All right. This is probably the most, one of the most famous nectar feeding insect. What is this one? Butterfly. That's right. This is a butterfly. Everybody recognizes butterflies. But have you ever thought, stopped to think about <clears throat> why do plants even make nectar? Why do plants make nectar? That's right. So plants make nectar for nectar feeders so that they can reproduce and, many, and mosquitoes drink our blood so that they can reproduce. So there's some continuity there. Who can tell me what kind of insect this is? A bee, that is right. What kind of bee is this? There's many kinds of bees. This is a very particular bee. A, bun, a bumblebee. It's not a bumblebee. Honeybee. A honeybee. Excellent. This is a honeybee. So what does this kind of insect make? It it makes honey. How does it make honey? How does it make honey? Who can tell me how it makes honey? From pollen and nectar. So it goes around the flowers, right? And it drinks nectar. Uh-huh. Well, how does the nectar get, get out of its body to become honey? How does it get out? That's right. They vomit it out. So honey is bee vomit. So who likes to eat bee vomit? Who likes bee vomit? Oh, I bet you liked bee vomit this morning just before you learned about what bee vomit is. So who's brave enough to tell me what they'll eat bee vomit on? I like bee vomit in my tea. Who likes bee vomit on toast? 
Who likes bee vomit on cereal? Who likes bee vomit on a spoon? All right, so. So nobody likes bee vomit, huh? All right, so before we go, I want you guys to say or sing something for me. Everything is better with some bee vomit on it. So even if you don't like bee vomit, whenever you see your mother or father or brothers or sisters or grandmother eating honey, you can sing this for them. Everything is better with some bee vomit on it. All righty. So that is going to conclude my presentation on bloodsuckers. Who is going to go outside now and let mosquitoes bite them because they love mosquitoes so much and I've changed their opinion on mosquitoes. Anybody that I get one? Yes, I'll take it. If I can ever get, change two people's opinions on mosquitoes and bloodsuckers, well, then I feel like I've done my job completely. So I thank you for listening. I thank you for your questions. I thank you for responding to my questions. And if you have any questions of your own, I'm happy to try and answer them right now. Thank you. So they're going to ask their questions and then give us a few seconds to turn the volume back down um, so we don't get too much feedback. Okay. Why are mosquito bites get... itchy? Okay. So that's an excellent question. Why are mosquito bites itchy? So when a mosquito bites us, it's not just sucking our blood. <clears throat> but it is injecting its own saliva into our skin and our blood vessels in order to keep our blood flowing. Because when you get a cut or a poke and you start bleeding, your body tries to stop that bleeding immediately by producing a scab. And the mosquito needs you to keep bleeding so that it continue to keep sucking your blood. So in its saliva, it has things called anticoagulants and enzymes to keep that blood flowing. Well, your body recognizes that these are foreign things that don't belong in your body. And so your body actually makes you itch. It's not the mosquito that makes you itch. Your body is trying to draw attention, your attention, to that there's something going on that's wrong. In, and uh, by getting you to um, itch in that place, your body is drawing your attention to that area. That's a good question. Are any mosquitoes poisonous? Are any mosquitoes poisonous? That's a good question. So um, do you know the difference between poisonous and venomous? So uh, things that are poisonous, are things that you eat that would make you sick or things that touch you and make you feel bad, like poison ivy or a poison dart frog. Uh, whereas something that is venomous is like a bee, which has venom, it stings you, or a viper, which bites you and injects something into you. And so, I am not aware of any mosquito that is either venomous or poisonous. So the really the only way that mosquitoes um, can affect our health is by carrying a disease that can make us very sick. Depending on your blood type, could it kill or harm a mosquito? That's a good question. So could your blood type um, kill or harm a mosquito? So our, I know that um, um, there are things in our blood that can be very harmful to mosquitoes. And I've read that certain blood types are more attractive to mosquitoes, say people with type O blood are more attractive to mosquitoes, but I've never read anything which indicated that it would be more lethal to a mosquito. But I'm going to have to go look that up and see if there's any a better answer to that.
and I'll try and let uh, Miss Megan know so she can give you the answer because now you got me curious. That's a really good question. What would our world be without mosquitoes? Oh, what would our world be like without mosquitoes? Well, I think it would be a very sad place. <clears throat> But most people don't agree with me. They say, no, let's just eradicate the mosquitoes. But mosquitoes are very important to our environment and our ecosystem um, as food for other organisms. And it's mostly not in the adult stage like we think, right? So do you remember how many eggs the mosquitoes laid in their clusters? It was like 75 eggs. Well, most of, so all of those eggs will usually hatch and those larvae will eat and grow, but most of those will never make it to become adult mosquitoes because they get eaten by other things like baby fish and other insects, which get eaten by fish and other things as part of the food web or the food chain. So if we were to eliminate mosquitoes from our environment, we could have important negative consequences for our uh, ecosystems. That's a very good question. She's had her hand up all day. She did such a good job. How are mosquitoes helpful to us? How are mosquitoes helpful to us? Um, well, I think uh, that mosquitoes are, for the most part, not very helpful to us. Mosquitoes do bite us and mosquitoes do carry diseases, which can be very bad for human health. But they are important food for the, ant, for the fish and um, um, like seafood that, that we eat. So mosquito larvae are eaten by little fish, which are eaten by bigger fish, which are eaten by bigger fish. And eventually um, those fish are fish that can be on our dinner table. So they are an important part of the food chain, the food web, and the ecosystem. Good question. All right, good friends. What do we say to Dr. Nathan? Thank you. Thank you, everybody. And remember, blood suckers are everywhere.